and this is where they have the really first office. According to the Benedictine rule, the really first office for the monk is to meet in a chapter house very early in the morning. Actually, it's by night, right after midnight, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, is to read one chapter of the Benedictine rule. Okay? So this is why you can see them like that. You have the abbot, like uh, abbot. In the, in the back of the room, and you have all the monks uh, around them. So this is the really first uh, office, and then they can go back uh, in their room. I would say even all over France, because it's such a room, as it's part of the monastic buildings, mostly after the French Revolution, it was destroyed. This one has been saved, so it's like a miracle. And unfortunately, after the revolution, it was turn into a factory and stable and so on. But it was restored by the administration, French administration in the 90s. So we are very proud of it because you won't find any place like that all over France, you see. Uh, it's still one of the oldest Romanesque abbey and Romanesque church we have in the area. We will see another example when we arrive in Jumiège, but here to see the evolution, when you do a complete tour, it's nice to see Jumiège and St. George because you can see the evolution in the architecture. This is a really first time they're going to start to carve some figures on a sculpture like that. Before they used to prefer having fresco, for example, and also they used to prefer to carve maybe, I don't know, flower, plants, herbs, that sort of thing, or little animals or sometimes, you know, like little lace like that, but not real figures. This is just coming, and this is something very interesting in, in San Diego. So I thought I'd just to go around and I have a tour of the different sculptures that we have. So, antiquity, this is where we used to have a pagan temple. Uh, they found out that because of doing research underground and they found where was right in the middle of the, of the cloister used to be the pagan temple. We have no idea of which god the temple was dedicating. Cloister here, okay? Just a cloister here. Um, also, we think that for one moment um, it has been transformed by a local family, maybe into a private cemetery, because they found out quite a lot of bodies buried <coughs> underneath. And also, according to the pagan tradition, you know, they used to give chicken animals uh, to the god, and they found out underground here a lot of bones from animals. So, we are antiquity, the first uh, century before Jesus, pagan temple, and imagine in the middle, um, like a little house with touch, uh, touch roof uh, in wood, wow. and uh, that was the temple, right here. Then, uh, later on, it's with Christianization, it has been transformed into a church, a Christian church. A little one, we are still with wood, touch roof, you know, that's really the beginning. And um, it has been transformed then into a real collegiate church with canon. What is the difference with the canon and the monks? The monks, they have the vow, poverty, charity, obedience, you remember, and they live in, um, in the wall of the abbey. For the canon, uh, C-A-N-O-N, they are still churchmen, but they can go out, you know, they don't pronounce the vow and they don't live inside the wall. So, instead of the pagan temple, here, going along the church we have now, it used to be the collegiate church. For a very long time, we used to have both churches because I told you the second one here was built when it was transformed into a real abbey for Benedictine monks in the 12th century and we still used to have both churches being right together, okay? Um, so that was it and you have to imagine yeah, just the church, the collegiate one going like that and it was destroyed, uh, the collegiate church then was destroyed, we are in the 17th century and nowadays only that one, uh, that one remains, actually. Um, so, cloister here, uh, you have as usual a little bit of water, a well in the middle, because it was, uh, was uh, just a just symbol of, of sand and uh, of the God spirit for the monks. And along the church, this is where we used to have the chapter house. Maybe we can go and have a look into the chapter house because they have nice pieces of sculpture inside and we can just focus on the organization of the life for the Benedictine monk when we are in the chapter house.
And what is also amazing, it is that the chapter room, which is dating from the 12th century, yes. was uh, carefully kept. The chapter room was kept, I think that is unique in our history, because in the 19th century, people were not caring for the ladies' architecture. But then, that has been uh, surrounded by the 17th century architecture, which is meaning that from the 17th century, they had the the idea that it has to be preserved. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. The garden was previously um, below, belonging to a farmer, so it was a big meadow. And there was a period from 1980, each year when I was coming, I said, somebody has been transformed. And when they told me they will be rebuilding that, I said, well, they are dreaming. <laughs> they did. <laughs> but over there, um, because they didn't have like a gin back in the time, uh, here you have to imagine like a little horse going around and just make the, the engine and the mechanism working.